Hello boys and girls, welcome to another session of Let's Play L.A. Noir. Our next homicide case is the Studio Secretary Murder. The Studio Secretary Murder. Train coming. Okay. Watch out, woman. She, is she drunk? It's either very... Very drunk or drugged. Of course, we will look into it. Yes, I'm aware that it's an election year. Keep a hold of your hat, Counselor. Now is not the time to lose your nerve. It would appear that someone has hocked a rose gold wedding ring, a matching engagement ring. Sound familiar? Dear Muller. Press the pawnbroker and see what you can find out. The address is 348 South Main Street. The Muller case goes before the grand jury next week, and the DA does not want any egg on his face. Then get out to the railroad depot on Santa Fe Avenue. We have another poor unfortunate found this morning beside a railroad line. Mm -hmm. Forty year old white woman. Fourteen year old. Right, Skipper. You're the reason, brother. Forty or fourteen. Forty. Okay. Okay. I'm still not happy with uh, the result of the last case. We uh, we have arrested this hobo. Um, he was a criminal, no doubt. He has killed many women, and he was a real mentally sick, probably um, um, probably because of the war. What what he has gone through there. Uh, but um, I don't think he is the real murderer of uh, of Mrs. Taraldsen or whatever was his what was her name. Um, it looks like the things like the rope and the ticket to that ballroom were planted there at his house or just given him or whatever. He's been in contact with the real murderer. But the body was brought there by car. He has no car, uh, so it doesn't make sense somehow. Um, but I made all the interview uh, f with him perfectly correct, and then they said, okay, that's him. The game wanted him arrested instead of the real murderer. It doesn't gave, didn't give me any further leads. And um, now it's now the case with Moller is coming back. But I did a real mistake. I had this father arrested uh, instead of at least a pedophile who was who was molesting some girls at the school. Um, but now, as far as I can read it, uh, is that the ring which we found missing. Has hocked. What is a hock? What is to hock? Appear that someone has hocked a rose wedding ring. Somehow bought uh, um, the rose wedding wedding ring from from the molar case. Press the pawn. Yeah, pawnbroker. It's just like a pawn shop. See what you can find out. And the address is this one. Muller case goes before the grand jury next week and the DA, the district attorney, doesn't want any egg on his face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then... Okay, so let's see what we will find. Find out. So we have two cases. The pawnbroker connecting us to the Muller case and the this new case. Um, with this 40 year old woman let's um i don't know where to start normal normal way to start would be to go to the uh, to the new fresh case because 
There may be witnesses around. And body. He brought and in the that that poor lady killed near City Hall. The Emperor may soon have to come to terms with the fact that he's wearing no clothes. What exactly did you get that book of riddles shoved up your ass? Mm -hmm. Is that what your old man paid college tuition for? No. That bum took a swipe at me. I put him down with my staff. There may be witnesses waiting um, at the crime scene, so I will just uh, go to the fresh crime rail yard. Drive me there. You can drive. You've got to admit, this is looking odd. Anyone could pawn a ring. But if you take it along with all of the other indicators... Cole. Hugo Moeller was identified by the school's ground team. He's our guy. He's not. Witnesses have fingered the wrong guy before. He ran, for God's sakes. And he always maintained he was set up. That's right. You boys ready? Follow me. I was driving fast. Hmm. Hard, isn't it? Yeah. I look after all the rail depots. What have you got? The Negro, Nelson Gaines, called it in. I came down here to make sure him and the other guy, Jameson, stuck around. Jameson found the body? Something like that. Guy makes me sick. We'll talk to the coroner. Keep oh, wow. an eye on both of them. <laughs> she looked like raped post, uh, post mortem, so it could have been the Jameson. Case I need to break. Or the murderer himself, I don't really know. What do you know? What have we got here? White female, approximately 40 years of age, lipstick smudges on the face, but no writing, at least nothing legible. A blunt force trauma to the temple, nose, and eye regions. Ligature mm. marks point to the probable cause of death being strangulation. Mm -hmm. Any idea of the time of death? From her temperature, after midnight would be my guess. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Very good. There is the usual evacuation smell, but it appears she's been living rough for quite some time. Ah. Very strong smell of alcohol. Well, the autopsy will tell, but I would assume that she was inebriated. Inebriated? What does it mean, inebriated? She was forcefully made drink alcohol, that she didn't drink it because she wanted to. Inebriated. I can't decompose the word. I don't know the, the foreign words in there. Another missing ring. Mm. Certainly seems I've been swabbing a lot of bare fingers recently. Can you be more exact about the time of death? No later than 2 a.m. The state the body was in, a one or two hour window is the best I can do. <laughs> She's no underwear. What's this? Is it the doctors? No. I wouldn't park there if I were you. Mm -hmm. Dear Evelyn, I hope that this letter finds you in a better way than when we last parted. It's about the same script as the parents have written to that girl, right? To that movie star girl. Bitter, wo bitter words were ex bitter words have were exchanged. 
you had taken too much liquor and we both know that we both know what that makes you become i'm not writing to harass and accuse i'm writing to apologize i was heartbroken seeing what had become of my little girl and what she is doing to herself you are destroying your body and your soul with liquor evelyn and it's harder for me to watch you it's harder for me to watch you than you can imagine but only god almighty above us has the right to judge and so i beg your for your forgiveness i beg your forgiveness hmm. i've been in contact with a sanitarium here in connecticut on your behalf they say your condition is an illness for evelyn and that it can be treated you only need to check yourself in it i will it will not something charge you or so is this her mother writing her or sister become of my little girl it's probably the mother or it is it is her it is the victim writing to her daughter but a 40 year old woman what age could the daughter be 20 15 something hmm. who knows the notebook will tell the you go over to the lot and see what they know about her what that's going to be difficult call keystone studio lot closed back at 41. really keystone film company Evelyn Summers legal okay so so this is Evelyn and this is the, the letter is what she received from her mother Evelyn Summers legal department October 20th Keystone company closed in 41 I wouldn't park there if I were you let me check the log um, movie lot job I don't know what a movie lot is but probably a place um, where movies are recorded or made um, upper half of torn letter what did he say someone was trying to get her to come home he said yeah Can you hold it still? Maybe someone at Mensch's will remember her. Mensch's bar corner and main, yeah, maybe. This is a chit for personal items, not booze. It's an angle worth investigating. Yeah, what it is? What is it? Levine's liquor store. This is a cheat for cheat like a sketch uh, thing, a note, a list, a sketchy list for personal items, not booze. Mm -hmm. Personal items: two large suitcase, small suitcase, bedroll, pillow. Plain bed sheet, three photo frames, hairbrush, bowling pin. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's the yeah pin. Statuette, makeup, and clothes. Mm -hmm. Strange. Personal items. Okay, is this all we've got here? Or is this more is there more evidence? What do you see here? Away from this. I want to have a look too. That's the gadget whiz guy putting recording devices in the 
place. Can you stand up, please? What are you thinking, Red? The city keeps tossing us dead bodies. We're just running to catch up. Hmm. Incidental. Incidental. It's like a police badge, isn't it? What what's that mark on it? Not much help. I think all the important evidence, all the important evidence was already collected on that on that blanket. Who's this? There are three kinds of people. Those who can count and those who can't. You're the second kind, right? I think we are done with the evidence here. Let's let's hear what 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 he thinks. I'm what? stumped. Uh, Ideas? Not that stumped, but looks like we might actually have a couple of witnesses this time. Get their statements. To go over my ho my notes. So there is this creepy guy, Jamison. Nelson Gain is the Negro, and Evelyn Summers is the victim. Railway switchman reporting witness and Jamison, potential suspicious witness, suspicious witness. Okay, so this is Nelson, right? Nelson, Nelson. Detective Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Can you tell me exactly what happened? We were shunting cars over to the main line when I saw this man here lying on top of this woman. Mm. The woman wasn't moving and seemed to be in a bad way. What time was this? About 7.30 this morning, sir. Thanks for your help. Have you given Patrolman Hart your details? I have, sir. Thank you. You can go now. Yeah, I thought so that this <laughs> Jameson was raping her after she died or after she was murdered. Now, you're Jameson? Detective Phelps, LAPD homicide. John Ferdinand Jameson. We need you to answer some questions, John. If you don't mind, I prefer Ferdinand. Don't push your luck, knucklehead. What were you doing to the body, Ferdinand? Are you sure you won't be upset? Try me, Ferdinand. I was kissing her. It's not against the law. Shut up. There's no Take law against it. Like a man. Turn out your pockets, Ferdinand. I've I've seen that before, right? Is this yours, Ferdinand? No. I found it near her purse. I thought she could use some lipstick. Rusty, stop! Don't hit him. I don't exactly understand Phelps's question. Um what were you doing to the ah what were you doing to the body like yeah what were you doing to the body sure you won't be upset oh, she, he was kissing her well, it's not against the law to kiss a dead body i guess turn out your pockets okay she he was applying some lipstick at least that's that's how far he confesses it's not that He's creepy indeed, but he, he probably didn't rape her. Oh, probably. Who knows? Let's let's see what he'll say. Can't really tell now. Go away. I don't want you. Interference with the evidence. 
What? 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 Review evidence. What is interfering with the evidence? Making on body a find in possession for in a movie or job. Upper half tone leather handbag. Time of death 2 a.m. Missing ring. Vagrancy. Signs of vagrant lifestyle. Okay. P pawn rings. No, uh, that's. <coughs> What is interfering with any... What kind of evidence? You uh, went through her purse? It wasn't like she needed it. I took a look. Okay. I think you're speaking the truth. But what did you take? Did you take any money? It wasn't any to take. I found her lipstick and her matchbook over on the mat. Not much else. Okay. When did you discover this body? You found the body? Yes, I did. I work here. I was coming off shift and headed home. Now I can doubt this one. Why didn't you report the body, Jameson? Do you know how this is going to look to a jury? A jury? What gives? I, I can tell that she was dead. I came through here about midnight last night. She wasn't here then. Let me belt him again. You're under arrest, Jameson. We'll see how this plays out. Until then, you can think a little on how you'd like to be treated if you were found dead. I'm telling you, it's not illegal. Me and some friends of mine... Clyde, you get this sack of shit into a cell. I'll deal with him later. Sure, Rusty. I wouldn't park there if I were you. So, let's see the log. What did he say after midnight? I was coming off shift and headed home. Um, why didn't you report the body? Did you, uh, what gives? I could tell that she was dead. I came here about midnight last night. Midnight last night means... What does it mean midnight last night? She wasn't here then. Last night, is it, is it the night? of today? Is it the night of the... or is it the night of yes, the day before yesterday to yesterday? Yeah, my, my question is if this about midnight last night he, he spoke these words today is he is he referring to the night between yesterday and today? Or is it is this referring to the night before the day before yesterday and yesterday. I'm not sure. I don't know that much English. Anyway, we have some new addresses to run, right? Uh, or addresses to go to. Like a store. We, we can let, let run this Levine's liquor store. Is there a phone? Yes, there is a phone. Somewhere here. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? I need an address on Levine's Liquor. Closest store to the Santa Fe Avenue rail yard, if possible. Just a moment, Detective. Closest store would be the one at 939 South Hope Street. Thanks, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Now, we've got some places to visit, but let's start with, with the pawnbroker. That's also a pressing case. You drive. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Read that those goddamn Chinese want to sell the relief food that we're sending them. Broadcasting since. Yeah. Yeah, right about that. These people are starving. They can't do that. They want to sell the food to fund the civil war against the communists. 
Really? Hmm. I guess that's okay, young man. <laughs> Armies can't fight without food. You spend all your money on weapons, but you still have to have the will to fight. Fortunately, the Reds were winning in China. Watch your mouth. You know what you're saying? The people of this country overthink the king. You think the Chinese will balk at an emperor if they are starving? Hmm. Money to loan, pawnbroker. Uh, let me see the notes. What clues do we have so far? Well, we have no clues uh, related to this, to the molar case here. So let's see. How can I help you, boys? Detectives Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. You have a rose gold wedding and engagement ring? David Bremner. Am I gonna get something for this pledge? Gave that bum money, now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give him? 50 bucks. Try another number. 20? Try 10. You feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. <laughs> Wait, I need to see. Um, he, did he introduce himself? Yes, he did. So he didn't. Okay. Rusty Galloway. Um, Bremner. 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 Ah, Bremner. The guy coming from Bremen. Bremen. It's, it's the family's name. I'm going to get something for this. Am I going to get something for this pledge? I gave that bum money. And now you guys are going to leave me short. How much did you give him? 50 bucks. Oh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay. A bum found it. Mark here. Maker's Mark. Usually traceable. Mm -hmm. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the tip. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why, is the, why is the two rings? Did the woman wear two rings? Does this mark mean anything? Yeah, 22. Oh, Mark. Gives you an idea of the quality. Twenty-two K, like twenty-two carat gold, or I don't understand why is it two rings now? Get out. What have you got on the guy who brought these in? Goes by the name of Percy B. Shelley. Gave an address, fifteen Poland Street. London, Tulare County. Can you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? I'm not sure. Medium height, medium build, dark hair, I think. Sorry. He just had one of those forgettable faces. We'll be in touch, Mr. Bremner. What did he give us? Mm. He, g he gave us some data, but we are not investigating it right now, right? Log. Description. The guy, Poland Street, London, Tulare County. So he was not from Los Angeles? He was from the London in Tulare County? And uh, that one came from Hartfield Jewelry on down on Broadway. Hartfield's Jewelry. Can we run that address? 
Where is the phone? Is there a phone? Hey, isn't it the cop who solved the big case and got promoted? No, I didn't solve any yet. Alright. We drive to... We're back to the normal pace. Um, Mench's Bar, Levine's liquor, Levine's liquor Store. Let's go to Mench's Bar. Can you drive to this one? We have a problem. We could have the local trooper check out the Tulare County address. Mm. The address is bogus. Bogus? The is having fun with us. Really? The guy who's been sending the Dahlia letters is also the guy who pawned these rings. How do you figure that? Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. The Dahlia letters are dead. The man who killed the woman's story may have also killed your mother. Wait, 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 wait. It, it, it's far too noisy on the street to listen to these dialogues. Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. If the Dahlia letters are genuine, then the man who killed Elizabeth Short may have also killed Adrian Moeller. Mm -hmm. So the, the address is bogus because he's he's using the name of the poem author, of the author of the poem. The perp, I don't know what perp is, but or who perp is, but it's usually the here it is probably the man who murdered these women, and is still we still don't know where he is. The guy who's been sending the Daniel letters is also the guy who pawned these rings. Yes, we can tell that because he introduced himself with this uh, bogus name. The skipper ain't gonna like this one bit. How do we prove it? Isn't this proof enough? What I've already said. We prove that, no. Skipper ain't gonna like this one. We're gonna have to rely on this guy tripping up on his own banner. Hmm. 